good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abu Bakr Adamu. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Center of Excellence in Theoretical and Computational Science at the King Mankut University of Technology, Tonguri, in Thailand, under the mentorship of Professor Dr. Kum Kum M. I'll be giving a seminar today on the topic titled Approximation Methods for Inclusion Problems in Real Banach Spaces with Applications. Here's the outline of my presentation. Uh, let H be a real bad space and let A be a single valued monotone operator on H and B be a multi valued monotone operator on H. The inclusion, the monotone inclusion problem one, which is to find U in H such that U is a zero of A plus B, has been of interest to many authors due to its numerous applications in solving problems arising from image restoration, signal recovery, and machine learning. One of the early methods for approximating solutions of the inclusion problem one is the forward backward algorithm which was introduced independently by Lyons and Meister and Pasti and studied extensively by many authors. In a red Hilbert space page, for, mono, for maximal monotone operators A and B, the forward backward algorithm is an iterative procedure that starts at the point X1 in H and generates iteratively the sequence Xn in H by solving the recurrence relation 2 with convergence of the sequence generated by the forward backward algorithm tool has been established by many authors under suitable conditions. However, in applications, strong convergence theorems are always desirable. Several modifications and alternatives of the forward backward algorithm have been proposed by many authors to establish strong convergence. In 2019, Wang et al. gave a comprehensive literature review on the modifications and alternatives of the forward backward algorithm that gives, forward, that gives strong convergence. Then they introduced and studied the viscosity type forward backward algorithm tree in Banach spaces that are uniformly convex and Q uniformly smooth. Under the assumption that the operator A is alpha inverse strongly accretive of order Q, B is M accretive, and the control parameters alpha and beta and lambda n and gamma n satisfy some appropriate conditions, Wang et al. proved that the sequence Xn generated by algorithm 3 converges strongly to a solution of the inclusion problem 1. Recently, there is a growing interest in the inclusion problem four, which is to find u in H such that in addition to u being a zero of A plus B, u is also a fixed point of some non-expansive mapping T. Observe that if T is the identity map, this inclusion problem four reduces to the inclusion problem one. In 2010, Takahashi et al. introduced and studied the, the iterative idea algorithm 5 for approximating solutions of the inclusion problem 4 in real Hilbert spaces under the assumption that the operator A is alpha inverse strongly monotone and B is maximal monotone and the operator X is non-expansive, Takahashi et al. proved that the sequence Xn generated by algorithm 5 converges strongly to a solution of the inclusion problem 4. The importance of the efficiency of any iterative algorithm in applications cannot be overemphasized. A lot of research efforts have been devoted to improving the speed of convergence of existing algorithms to the desired solution. In recent years, many authors have exploited the inertial technique in order to accelerate the convergence of the sequence generated by their algorithms. The initial extrapolation technique was first introduced by Poliak as an acceleration process in solving smooth convex minimization problems. An initial algorithm is a two-step iterative method in which the next iterate is obtained by using the previous two iterates. Many authors have shown 
numerically that adding the initial extrapolation term to an algorithm improves its performance. In recently, in 2021, Adamo et al. introduced and studied the iterative algorithms, the initial iterative algorithm six for approximating solutions of the inclusion problem four in real Hilbert spaces. Under the assumption that the operator A is alpha inverse from B monotone, B is maximal monotone, and X is non-expansive, Adamo et al. proved that the sequence Xn generated by the equative algorithm 6 converges strongly to a solution of the inclusion problem 4. The literature on the monotone inclusion problem 1 and its generalization 4 in real Gilbert spaces abound. However, as has rightly been observed by a series editor of mathematics and its application, Mkluwa academic publishers, Heza Winkle, Heza Winkle observed that many and probably most mathematical objects and models do not live in Hilbert spaces. Hence, there is a need to establish, there is a need to extend results established in Hilbert spaces to Banach spaces more general than Hilbert spaces. The concept of monotonicity in Hilbert spaces can be extended to Banach spaces in either of the following cases. The first case is when the operator A maps the Banach space E to, sub to its subset. When such an operator satisfies this inequality, we call them accretive. Interest in the study of accretive operators stems mainly from their firm connection with the existence theory for nonlinear evolution equation. The other case is when the operator A maps the Banach space E to subsets of its dual space E star. When such an operator satisfies this inequality, we maintain the name monotone. Interest in the study of monotone operators stems mainly from their firm connection with optimization problems. In 2020, Lu gave an accretive extension of the inclusion problem for in Banaxes that are uniformly smooth and uniformly convex. Lu introduced and studied the iterative algorithm 7 under the assumption that the operator A is alpha inverse strongly accretive and B is M accretive and C is non expansive. Lu, et, Lu proved that the sequence Xn generated by algorithm 7 converges weakly to a solution of the inclusion problem 4. Now, motivated by the comprehensive literature review given by Wang et al. and the current interest in the inclusion problem 4, we introduced and studied the initial algorithm 8 in Banach spaces that are uniformly convex and Q uniformly smooth. Under the assumption that the operator A is alpha inverse strongly accretive, B is M accretive, S is non expansive. And the control parameters satisfy conditions i to three i's. We prove that the sequence Xn generated by our initial algorithm eight converges strongly to a solution of the inclusion problem four. I believe this thought must be going through all your minds. However, in the next few slides, we hope to clear your doubts. Now we give application of the theorem we just proved to the convex minimization problem nine, which is to find x star in H such that f of x star plus z of x star is a minimum of this sum. Observe that the, this minimization problem four can be recast as the inclusion problem 10, setting A to be the gradient of f and B to be the sub-differential of z in the previous theorem, we obtain theorem five. Now, we give application of the theorem also to image restoration problems. One of the main sources through which humans decipher information about the world is, image, is images. Our interest here is on the classical problem of image restoration, which are image denoising and image deblurring. We shall explain this problem better using this image. Assume we have an original image disk that undergoes a certain degradation to form this degraded image at the right. Our objective here is to use mathematical algorithms to undo the degradation on this image so as to form an image closest to the original image. 
It is well known that the L1 regularization method is a powerful tool in image denoising, and the process is given by itself. So we use our proposed uh, algorithm 3 of 1 itself and our proposed algorithm 11 for the restoration process. In MATLAB, we set this A to be the motion block function and added random noise. The test images we used are Abu Bakr, Kitwan, and Barbara. For the case of these images, the problem we considered is a scenario whereby the whole image is degraded and the objective is to restore the complete image. We use algorithm, these are the restored images using algorithm 3 of 1 et al. and our proposed algorithm 11. Uh, one can see from the restored images that the restored images using our proposed algorithm 11 is better than those obtained using algorithm 3 of 1 et al. However, if someone has color blindness, there is a tool which we use to measure the quality of the restored image. That tool is what we call the SNR, that is signal to noise ratio. The higher the SNR value for a restored image, the better the restoration. So in this table, we give the SNR uh, values for the images we restored. Observe that for algorithm 3 of 1 et al, after the first 200 iterations for Abu Bakr's image, algorithm 3 of 1 et al has a SNR value of 32.59, while our proposed algorithm 11 for the same image has a SNR value of 38.14. You can see the difference. Uh, also for Kitspan's image, after the first 200 iterations, Algorithm 3 of Wang et al has a SNR value of 37.45, while our proposed algorithm 11, which is the initial version of the algorithm of Wang et al, has a SNR value of 42.21. So in general, for this, uh, for these images, we consider our algorithm outperforms that of Wang et al. Next, we shall also give an application of the theorem to, uh, to signal processing in compressed sensing, which is a technique used for obtaining and reconstructing signal. The model is similar to that of image restoration, so we shall not, to avoid unnecessary replication for this presentation, we shall not repeat it here. So we also consider the same algorithms, algorithm of one et al, which is algorithm three, and our proposed algorithm 11. So we consider two cases, maintaining the dimension and varying the number of spikes. For the first case, when the number of spikes is 50, uh, it took our proposed algorithm 11, sorry, this 21 should be 11. It took our proposed algorithm 11, 82 iterations to satisfy the stopping criteria, while it took algorithm 3 of 1 et al, 333 iterations before it could satisfy the stopping criteria. Also, when we increase the number of spikes to 100, it took our proposed algorithm 135 iterations to satisfy the stopping criteria, while algorithm 3 of 1 et al. took 810 iterations before it could satisfy the stopping criteria. We did not say anything about the time because the computational time is relatively the same. Here is the graphical uh, plot for the mean square error with respect to the number of iterations. The one in broken lines in blue is that of Wang et al., while this one in red is our proposed algorithm. Now we also give a numerical implementation of the method in a Banach space, which is more general than Hilbert space, to support our extension. So we considered L5 of minus 1, 1, because uh, we set A to be this, B to be this, and we choose X to be identity, so as we, to enable us compare with the algorithm of one et al. So observe that for this example, it took our proposed method, just our proposed method satisfies the stopping criteria after the first 10 iterations, while the algorithm of uh, one et al is yet to satisfy the stopping criteria when the maximum number of iterations was exhausted. 
Here is a graphical representation of the data in the previous table. The results were presented here as stored in the refereeing process in this journal, Mathematics and Computers in Simulation. Next, uh, these questions will help our members of the lab to see how to pose uh, research problems and how to go about them. A natural question from what we have presented is, can the alpha inverse strong monotonicity assumption on the operator A in all the theorems above be dispensed with? This question was answered in the affirmative by his end, whom using the extra gradient, the idea of the extra gradient method of Koppel Levick, he replaced the alpha inverse strong monotonicity assumption on A with Lipschitz continuity. However, he was able to prove weak convergence. His extension is indeed, uh, it's more general than this alpha inverse strongly uh, monotonicity assumption. We remark here that the class of monotone operators that are Lipschitz continuous, which Seng considered, uh, contain properly the class of monotone operators that are alpha inverse strongly monotone. Since every alpha inverse strongly monotone is one over alpha Lipschitz continuous making the theorem of Seng more general. A natural question from that of Seng is, can the weak convergence established by Seng be improved to strong convergence? Can the initial extrapolation technique be employed to improve the performance of the algorithm of Seng? These questions were answered in the affirmative by members of our lab, Dr. Anand Tsai, Dr. John Common, Assistant Professor Weida Kumam, and our able professor Punkem M. They give answers to these questions up here. The next question that might be of interest is can the same algorithm be extended to Banach spaces for monotone operators? This question was answered in the affirmative by Chebu, who gave a modification of the same algorithm in Banach spaces that are uniformly smooth and so uniformly convex. However, to establish strong convergence, shape will require that the normalized duality map on the space be weakly sequentially continuous. We also remark here that the requirement that the normalized duality map be weakly sequentially continuous imposed by Shehu in his theorem rules out some important classical Banach spaces. For example, for P not equals to two, the big LP spaces, on the big LP spaces, the duality map is not weakly sequentially continuous. Here are some highlights which we hope to give in our next seminar. We hope to answer the following questions. Can the algorithm of Stein be modified to solve the inclusion problem for, which is of current interest to researchers in this area? Can the restriction in the theorem of Shehu be dispensed with? Can the initial extrapolation technique be employed to improve the performance of the algorithm of Stein, which we are proposing? How about applications to the new concept of JPEX points, image restoration, and signal processing? We have answered virtually 90% of these questions in this our paper, which we are currently working on. We are just working on the image restoration and signal processing aspect. In the next seminar, we hope to uh, share with the audience what we have. Now, who has seen uh, a natural question of interest that you can pick up to solve? While you are thinking about that, here are our references. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>